Hi there. Welcome to The Preventable, the podcast giving you a seat at the table with conversations about the intersection of alcohol, drugs, and mental health in everyday lives. Take a seat and join us. Welcome to The Preventable. With me today is Colton Baker, and he is the lead recovery coach of the Epic Outreach Project. Colton, that is a mouthful. It is. Thank you guys for having me. You are welcome. And here's the thing I love about you. So we've worked together for a couple of years and you basically said, what do I got to do to be on this podcast? Yeah, I saw uh, a bunch of guests that you guys have had on. It looked cool. I was like, I got to I got to be a part of this. Well, yeah. I mean, I I appreciate you saying like, uh, get me on because you wanted to talk about a lot of things, but you also want to draw attention to what Epic is. So I mentioned you're the lead recovery coach, Epic Outreach Project. What does that even mean? What is Epic, first of all? So Epic stands for Engaging Patients in Care Coordination. Okay. And so the basic premise is all of our recovery coaches are certified peer specialists. And now, can so, I can we press pause? Yeah. So we've talked in previous episodes about a certified peer specialist. So we had Ken and Joe and Ryan on yes. to talk about what it is. In a nutshell, if people, you know, shame, shame, if you're out there and you didn't listen to that episode, <laughs> in a nutshell, what is a peer support specialist? Real short answer, individuals with lived experience in the terms of, in the realm of substance use and or mental health. Okay. Easiest way to put it. Exactly. Okay. And so a, a recovery coach is a peer specialist? It, it is the terminology that we decided to use, but... It is a certified peer specialist, yes. Got and it. So all of our coaches have lived experience with, uh, specifically with opioid use. Okay. But in terms of substance use in general. Okay. Which has really served us well in a lot of facets, right? Because what we'll do is we will respond to hospitals, every hospital in the eastern region of Missouri, SSM, BJC, Mercy, St. Luke's, South City. All of all the of hospitals, mm -hmm. and we'll respond within 60 minutes. Which is insane. 60 minutes? That's insane. It is a pretty rapid response. Mm -hmm. And it, it is, it's super rewarding, right? Because you're meeting with people in dire situations, right? Where you, maybe you just experienced an overdose event, and you're there in the emergency department. Maybe you showed up for medical needs, and they screened you and found out you have opioid use disorder. Or maybe you're inpatient in the hospital, whether it be behavioral mm -hmm. health or on a med floor, just a ton of different ways somebody might end up in the hospital. But either way, we're trying to capitalize on that window of time, maybe a window of readiness to see some change in your life. And that's the crux of why we use peers. But you're not like holding, I mean, you're not making people seek treatment. No, so right. for for somebody to qualify, these are adults, so you can't make them really do anything, right? We, yes, so we can actually serve fourteen and up. Learn something new today. Okay. Yes, so fourteen to seventeen is a little bit different of a process. Of we course. obviously need like a parental or Consent. guardian sign off mm -hmm. to be able to do that, and it's a more narrow um, referral process. So we partner with Tree T R E E through preferred family okay. that does youth. So all of our youth referrals go that way. Got it. Um, but it, it was, you know, how can we serve the widest group of people possible? So let's play this out. So let's say that I um, am uh, given Narcan, opioid reversal drug. I am taken, you know, to the hospital or, or I, maybe I walk in myself or something and the emergency room physician gives you all a call and then you're there within 60 minutes and you work your magic and try to get me help? Is this how it happens? Like That's it's a, just that easy, right, Colton? I, I wish it was. <laughs> I wish it happened. Our engagement rate would be 100%. Mm. You know, but um, it, it is. It, we will be out there within an hour a lot of times, much quicker than that. But the when you really consider that moment, right, you've had... 10 different people walk in the room. Hi, I'm going to do your assessment mm -hmm. and paperwork. Hi, I'm a nurse. I'm going to help you with this. I'm the physician. Let's talk about these options. When a peer can walk in the room and say, look, I know where you're at. I know what you're going through, but I personally will 
get you a way out of this thing. I will guide you through the process. I will make the referral for you. I will help you get there. I will walk you through the process afterwards, make sure you have what it takes to stay engaged in treatment. That impact, I think, is a little bit different. And I think it's in large part why Epic has been so successful. Talk to me about success. Because so Epic has been around through the state opioid response and then the state targeted response grants, right? So yes. it's been around since what, like 2017, 2018? Got piloted in the winter of 2016. Okay, okay. And at that time, we were only partnered with three hospitals and we had two recovery coaches. Since then, we've onboarded every hospital system and are up to 12 recovery coaches. Wow. Which is a pretty, uh, pretty big growth. Mm, huge. Yeah, for sure. For and sure. then, on, I mean, on top of that, we've been expanding to EMS and fire districts also mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. you look at, you know, how can we put these resources into the hands of people who need it, right? Well, not everybody who needs help is showing up to the hospital, totally. right? There's a myriad of reasons why somebody might not show up, but um, to really take some... What I've always said to hospital staff members, EMS, fire department staff is, I'm not trying to ask you to do another thing. I know that you Smart. guys are overwhelmed. Smart. I know you're busy. There's a lot going on. What I'm here to do is to make your job easier. You make a five-minute phone call. We will come in. We will take them off your hands. We will solve the root issue so that you don't see them again. I mean, mm -hmm. that's one of the... Easy, easy selling factors for onboarding Epic is if you make an Epic referral, you are 66% less likely to see this patient again mm. for any reason Whoa. over the course of the next 12 weeks. Whoa. So, I mean, you're what way less likely to see this person again because what did we do? We connected them to substance use treatment. They have a case manager we're working on. All of the reasons somebody, all of the things somebody might need to be successful, whether it be trying to hook you up with housing, get you a primary care physician, yep. make sure you have the meds that you need to not just treat substance use disorder, but to treat anything that you have going on. What? So out of like 10 people how, that you say, I'm here to help you, you want to go? Like, let, let me help you. How many out of 10 would you say? The last time we updated our PowerPoint slides, I think it was 52%. And that's hey, always that's great. That's always variable to change, but I, I always say that I'm super proud of that number, right? That because that's a, that's a good number. You know, this is not a cohort of people who showed up to a treatment provider <laughs> and said, "Hey, I would love to get help today." And it's not even a cohort of people that were mandated by the criminal justice system to say, "You better do this or else." Right. 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 Yeah. A lot of comparable programs, or even some programs that we kind of modeled Epic after have seen typical engagement rates of like 18 to 35%. Wow. So I'm very proud of our engagement rate. So you said that there are 12 recovery coaches. Yes. Which means that there are 12 people doing this for all of the hospital systems that you described. Yes. Okay. I have sat next to you in meetings and yes. you first of all your Batman factor is like 10. You have like 14 <laughs> phones, three beepers, carrier pigeons. I mean, you are always on. Well, it can get pretty wild, yeah. It can get I mean, you are like an air traffic controller. Yeah, yeah. in some ways, yeah. So how I mean, how do you do you get to turn it off ever? I mean, I did sexual assault work before I did this. And so my phone would ring and I would go out to the hospital in the middle of the night and I would sit by people's bedsides and, you know, support them. And I, I had a very large team of people, so I wasn't yeah. always on. Do you get a night off? Yeah. So we've been very fortunate over the last few years to kind of build out our staff. Mm -hmm. And so really what we'll typically have is like a 12 hour shift. Oh, okay. So maybe you'll work 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Or maybe you'll do noon to midnight or 7, 7 p to 7 a. So we always have people able to respond 24-7. But uh, you guys had Jordan Hampton on mm -hmm. a couple mm -hmm. episodes ago. Um, you know, coaches from when this first thing started. We were doing 24 hours of shifts 
for like five days in a row. Yeah, y'all were. We would be texting fumes. each other back and back energy and forth. Drinks, it. Actually, you'd be running on energy drinks. <laughs> I just recently curbed my caffeine habit. What? Successfully, I know, but it wow. was it was an unhealthy relationship there for a little while, just trying to but make I it all work. But I also understood it because you're. Yeah. I mean, you were literally saving lives. The that's, that's the beautiful thing about it is is you you can put that in when you truly believe in mm-hmm. in what you're doing mm-hmm. like every like everybody here does right but I can you just see the market impact that that Epic has on these individuals it's like when I'm doing onboarding presentations with fire departments or EMS districts because you know you're, you're telling people this is not just a person you're not going to see again, right? You're, you're probably not going to see them again, but it's not because they're just not dead. It's not because yes. you're just not running calls on them. These are individuals who are fathers, mothers, sons, daughters, family members, taxpaying community members, mm-hmm. people who are a number of people who were outreached by Epic are actually epic recovery coaches now, mm. you know, and so mm. so to be able awesome. to make that pitch and say it's not just another statistic in the right column, but yeah. it's the the qualitative impact that it has. When when you see that day in and day out, it's hard not to be fired up about. It. It's hard to not want to come on this podcast and tell everybody about it because it's it's awesome yeah. and and it does have that that impact. I mean, I I think Epic is one of the like success stories out of all of this mess yeah. and yeah. it's one of the beautiful things that have come out of tragedy right yeah. and and is yeah. a coordinated response from lots of different agencies yeah. um which for years everybody was lamenting like we got a partner we got to collaborate we got a part and and epic yeah. is a real i think example of that I, I could not agree more. It, you know, you look at where all of our recovery coaches are actually employed, right? Mm, so yeah. you look at project management is essentially through behavioral health network. You have all of our coaches hired through Preferred Family, Gateway Foundation. I'm employed at Comtree. Center for Life Solutions. Center for Life Solutions, yep. Queen of Peace. And so you kind of get that full impact. And then not only that, but to have the the treatment providers, the hospital systems, and then grassroots community organizations totally. that we partner with as well, it gives you the ability to meet your needs. Right. Right. Like, how helpful is it going to be if you live in North County and I tell you you have to go to treatment in St. Charles? Yeah, not helpful at all. Or in South County mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, to make this work, we have to have a realistic solution and realistic options for people to to have that impact. I mean, I talk about it all the time, but making treatment truly accessible for people is a role that I think peers play in well, right? Because they can bring up real world concerns and or issues that people might have to be able to meet. Like, put it like this. If you, you Mm -hmm. told me today, Colton, I need help for substance use. And I put you in a position, like, what's the likelihood that you could show up? You could show yeah. up to treatment every single day, do group for a few hours, I mean, see a physician. Pretty, pretty good if I, yeah, pretty good. It, it, it's it's going to be difficult to manage all of the things. If, if we want to make a complete person, like a whole person where you can attend treatment, have a job, oh, be there for your totally. family. That would be, I would have to take a leave of absence. For sure. Yeah. And totally. And I mean, so, how do you make it accessible for people? I mean, you're bringing it into people's like communities, which I think is really so unique about this. Right. So like I, I'm in recovery from substance use and mental health. I take an antidepressant, right? Mm-hmm. So for me to do that, I have a, what, like a Skype appointment once every three months that takes 30 minutes. It's filled at my pharmacy. Yep. Like if I had to go to treatment every single day to continue on those medications it's unlikely totally that's eight years later i would still be doing that totally so you know it's finding the right balance and being able to put real world solutions in people's hands that is impactful like you mentioned you mentioned peers we've talked about peers a couple of times i think one of the other things that for me when i think of you colton i think of your role in really for lack of a better word legitimizing 
yeah. certified peer specialists and yeah. and making sure that there's a structure and that the training is what it needs to be and that they're not taken advantage of and that there are sounding boards and, and processes. And so talk a little bit about the statewide group that now has kind of feelers in other places besides Missouri. I'm glad you asked that question. So the National Peer Recovery Alliance, NPRA, started as MoPros in Missouri. Now MoPros is an affiliate of a larger NPRA. And, and what that has really started to do and it is serving to do is to, one, you know, advocate for certified peer specialists in terms of, like you said, you know, still today in Missouri and in other states, it's sometimes loosely defined as what a peer's role is. You know, sometimes you'll have peers and agencies doing like front desk work or right. entering information into the computer. Others are serving more as like a case management-esque role. Some are doing like individual counseling. And I think if we want to solidify certified peers in this environment, we need to be able to, one, keep it variable enough that they can be effective, oh, sure. but also, you know, define what a peer is and what a peer isn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't want to get too far off track from NPRA, but the the peers that came before me were restocking vending machines and taking out the trash, right? And so as we've kind of evolved over time, I think it's important for the peers that we have today to feel a sense of responsibility to not only legitimize the peer role, but also bring up the next generation of peers. Totally. Well, and it's not just that that we don't want peers to be taking out the trash. We yeah. also don't want peers to be doing things that quite frankly, they shouldn't be doing. Right. And you definitely shouldn't be billing for their time. And and one thing that you brought up to me, I mean, this was a, this was now a couple of years ago, but we were talking with Jenny and others about how Let's say that I have found recovery at a particular treatment center, yep. and now I get my certification and I'm a peer at that treatment center Yeah, because I have an allegiance to them, a loyalty to them, sure. and, and they help me get my life back. Well, what happens if things sort of, like if I have a concern or if I don't love how I'm being treated, like you didn't have at that point, you didn't really have an outlet to be able to say, like, is this normal? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. and that's really, I think that's pretty huge. It, it, it is. To set and reinforce those boundaries. All things that people learn when they're finding recovery is to really right. be an, an advocate for yourself and to really be able to speak up for yourself. Absolutely. Uh, an organization to advocate for the peers themselves and then for the clients that they serve. A million percent. It's, uh, you know, every... Up to this point, every job I've taken, I was the first peer hired at that mm. agency. And so oftentimes, you know, it's not like a substance use treatment agency's fault in this sense, of but course. it's, you know, you're hiring a new position. And not only does the director not know exactly how peers fit in, but you're legitimizing this to your coworkers. Well, case managers, well, what do they do? Substance use counselors, well, what do they do? And so for a larger organization to help like set out some of those guidelines to be able to make recommendations to say like this is how we've utilized peers in the past this is how we could see them being successful moving on to the future it's what i what i hate to see is peers being the person who just puts out fires right 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 which i have been that person before right yeah case managers having problem we'll call colton he'll get over here he'll <laughs> Throw cold Call water on the situation. We need somebody to run group. So instead of meeting with somebody, I'm running group. Then it's, can you help with this? And I loved every minute of, of doing that. But at the same time, maybe I was doing a little bit of a disservice to the professionalization of the peer role itself. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I, I think moving forward, that's one of the things I'm trying to push is, you know, how can we solidify this position? Because I believe in it with all my heart, mm -hmm. right? And so you for us to be it. able to... It's like palpable, really. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, that that's a really important push that NPRA is making. And so my understanding, and you sort of alluded to this, is that there are other NPRAs 
nationwide. And so this is part of a larger sort of movement, if you will. Yeah. Yep. So NPRA has affiliates in a bunch of other states. I don't even want to say how many because by the time this comes out, it'll be two more. Awesome. Um, but it, it is growing throughout the the country as a whole. And that's been a uh, a fun ride to see happen as well. All of a sudden, you're connecting to a much larger network, Ohio, West Virginia, out west. Like it's it's cool to see a bunch of other individuals and organizations doing similar work. And so, how does everybody not benefit by connecting those groups and making sure they have outlets, they have people to bounce something off of, and we can all push together and make a larger impact mm. if we're all working together, obviously. Colton, I, I have so enjoyed this. I'm so glad you called and said, get me on this podcast because I, I think, I think Epic is one of those gems of a programs that me like too. it again, it, it comes out of necessity and tragedy, but it's like, oh my gosh, how did we not do this before? Yeah. And I think one of the reasons we didn't do it before is because we didn't have people like you sort of leading the charge. So I, you don't have to say anything for that, but I'm going to say it and I'm going to let it land because I think Thank it's, you. it's really Thank true. You. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for everything that you are doing. Um, anytime I say the name Colton, everyone's like, I love that guy. That guy's so great. That guy's That's so great. awesome to hear. And I had a great time being here. Anytime you guys need anything, you guys know you can always right. call. The offer is always, always on the table. <laughs> if you enjoyed this conversation with Colton, if you want to learn more about peers, maybe you want to... Think about becoming a peer yourself. You want to learn more about the the organization NPRA. Yeah, Did I get the right. Okay. Yes. Uh, consider rating, reviewing, or subscribing. Uh, thank you again so much. Had a great time. Thanks. Thanks for joining us at the Preventable, brought to you ad free by Prevent Ed. Prevent Ed works to reduce or prevent the harms of alcohol and other drug use through education, intervention, and advocacy. Please visit their website at prevented.org. Like what you heard? Rate, review, and subscribe to stay up to date with what we are serving on The Preventable.